in today's pathology series we are going to talk about peptic ulcer so focus on this word peptic ulcer it is basically a breach in mucosa in any part of git so if breach in inner layer of that occurs so we says that we developed an ulcer and name is peptic ulcer commonest is gastric and duodenal risk factors there is different types of risk factors which are ultimately causing this ulcer so first risk factor is genetic it is often seen that in patient with blood group o there is more chances of developing this peptic ulcer and we have hla bs which is basically a gastric carcinoma which is also a risk factor for this ulcer some psychological factors which include sex, uh, stress anxiety and emotions they are collective they are going to cause this peptic ulcer curling ulcer curling ulcer are basically a type of gastric ulcer but its relation is basically with stress so due to increase stress with burn we developed an ulcer and we gave that ulcer a name curling ulcer some pathological causes of this is also which is increased parathyroid hormone level increased production of hcl chronic renal failure condition and cushing syndrome condition we have a chance of developing this ulcer disease pathogenesis is basically a one line pathogenesis which is basically imbalance between defensive forces and aggressive forces acting on git in our second part of lecture we will discuss those defensive and aggressive forces in detail gastric mucosa there is a one key phrase which we have to remember for a gastrointestinal condition remember in gastric mucosal condition every patient who is admitted in icu with gastric mucosa first line of treatment is basically proton pump inhibitors omeprazole so this is also a key important in this lecture till now i will briefly uh, remember the main points that we discussed that what actually peptic ulcer is what are commonest risk factors pathogenesis as well as their type as we discussed in pathogenesis that it is an imbalance between defensive forces and aggressive forces so let's talk about that what defensive force and aggressive forces are so in case of defensive forces there is an increase mucus production and uh, there is breakdown of mucus there is protein that is going to be break that mucus there is additional bicarbonate here hcl production increase and uh, zullinger ellison syndrome is going to be there zullinger ellison syndrome is basically in upper gi especially in pancreas and duodenum so there is tumors and carcinomas that develop so we says we have zullinger's ellison syndrome then here we have specialized apical surfaces inhibitor and hcl penetrations and there is remarkable regeneration ability in case of defensive forces in case of aggressive forces h pylori bacteria h pylori bacteria is gram negative bacteria having role in inflammation and have the ability to penetrate here bacteria going to be penetrate we have regeneration ability here prostaglandin production increase and hcl production decrease here nsaid intake and prostaglandin level decrease so prostaglandin is basically a uh, prostaglandin is a uh, main role is in inflammation and in induction of labor so here its level decrease in aggressive in case of defensive its level will going to be increase so these are basic conditions in defensive protein productions hcl regeneration ability prostaglandin for protein production hcl regeneration ability prostaglandin in case of defensive increased in case of aggressive decreased then we have some clinical features of these ulcers first is gastric ulcer in it burning pain in epigastric region is epigastric and gi upset nausea and vomiting going to be occur and the timing usually 30 meter after eating and uh, such a person having this gastric ulcer is very thin and lean because he is afraid of eating because after eating after 30 minutes of eating 
he usually developed a condition of di uh, condition of vomiting so we uh, such a person is lean because of this uh, and he usually not eat and because of that he is uh, thin and lean and have a condition of gastric ulcer in case of urinal ulcer we have a region is umbilical and nausea vomiting after 2 to 3 hours of eating in case of gastric we have uh, uh, 30 minutes in case of duodenal we have 2 to 3 hours after eating such a person will keep on eating keep on eating until such a person will become overweight and obese in most cases duodenal ulcer patient is overweight and obese and in gastric patient because of fear of uh, vomiting after eating such a person is usually lean and thin so guys till now we discussed the pathogenesis we discussed peptic culture we discussed its causes and risk factors and we discussed the clinical features of gastric and duodenal ulcers and we discussed the forces aggressive and defensive so hope you all will understand this ulcer and stay tuned with me for upcoming videos on pathology and clinical biochemistry and just stay don't forget subscribe medicals lectures by shijat stay healthy stay safe thank you so much